Okay, welcome back to linear regression and scatter plotting. We left off with residuals, which is finding the error, your prediction error. So you have an actual value, which we call y, and you have a predicted value, y hat. We'll explain later how you get them, but let's say the actual value is this little black dot right here. And this predicted value is actually supposed to be directly on the line, but the vertical distance between these two is our prediction error. So the y, actual minus y hat predicted value is 63.5 minus 61.39 or 2.11. That's our residual for at exactly 110 chirps. So when there are 110 chirps, the residual is the value 2.11. So let's take a look at a more examples on the chirps and temperature. We're going to predict the temperature outside based on the number of cricket chirps per minute. So let's say you did not have a thermometer in the house, but you did have a cricket stuck in your house. And you used a stopwatch to count the number of chirps in one minute. So the regression equation that scientists have come up with is that you can predict your temperature. Temperature with the hat over it means the predicted temperature is the linear equation 37.7 plus 0 0.23 times the number of chirps. So if you listen and hear crickets chirping about 140 times per minute, you plug in 140 in for the word chirps and you multiply it by 0.23 and then you add 37.7. So 37.7 plus 0.23 times 140 is 69.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So when there are about 140 chirps per minute. You can predict that it's almost 70 degrees outside. So let's take an example that you can try. Now I'm posting all solutions for this, scan solutions for now. I'm leaving these blank for you to work on. If the crickets are chirping about 180 times per minute, 180 is here on the chirps, what is the best estimate of the temperature? So what we want to do is instead of putting in 140 like we did before, we're going to put in 180 for the number of chirps. So I want you to try that. Put in 37.7 plus 0 0.23 times 180 and see what you get as the prediction for the temperature at 180 times per minute. The slope. The slope is always the value next to the explanatory variable. So our value next to the explanatory variable is 0 0.23. That's our slope. It's positive. So what that is saying is, let's go back to the interpretation. How to interpret so, slope. For each additional increase in number of chirps, your explanatory variable, the response variable is the temperature slope is positive, so increases by 0.23 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll read it again. For each additional increase in number of chirps per minute, the temperature increases by 0 0.23 degrees Fahrenheit. If you look at the solutions, all of that is written out for your answer for part B. Finally, calculate the residual temperature for difference of, of for 140 chirps if the actual temperature recorded was 65 degrees. Remember, residual is actual minus predicted. The actual is given to you at 65. Your predicted was calculated right here at 69.9. So you're going to take 65 minus 69.9. And yes, you can have negative values for your residuals. So I want to go full circle and go back to the original chocolate and Nobel laureate example, because if you recall way back here, we, de we determined that there is no way that eating chocolate in a society increases number of Nobel laureates. But we do see a clear trend, and so the question is, there, is there something lurking that's connecting chocolate consumption and Nobel laureates? And that is almost always the case that there may be a third variable called a lurking variable or a confounding variable that's influencing the relationship between something like chocolate and number of Nobel laureates. So we are going to have to dig deeper into what is a lurking variable, and you'll do plenty of that in your group work.
finally, let me show you your solutions when you click on them and you'll get to see what they look like. This is your scan solutions that I've posted on your notes. And if you scroll through, you'll see some of my notes that I've written on all of the things that I've just discussed so that you can go back to it and understand it a little bit more. But this is what you're going to be looking at. And there is the solution to when the number of chirps is 180, what is your predicted temperature? And then here is the interpretation of the slope of 0 0.023. Here is your residual value of actual minus predicted. So please go back through all of these. If you have any questions, you can always email me, and we will finalize everything when I come back to class on Monday. But thank you for watching.